What's up, college football fans? Don't forget to check out and order your copy of Stiff Arming Football Myths, our latest football game plan book. So go on our website at footballgameplan.com slash books and get your copy. We have these available in paperback as well as in PDF form. Welcome to FootballGamePlan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Bring you our 2014 preview of the Capital One Orange Bowl between the Mississippi State Bulldogs and the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Now let's take a look at some coaching points for both teams in this ball game, starting with Mississippi State. For Mississippi State in this ball game, they have to win in the box. That's tackle to tackle. If they can win in the box on offense and on defense, it bodes well for these guys having some success because on offense, you want to lean on that tech interior, and on defense, you have to blow up the option inside out. And if they can win in the box, they can win the game. And they can't get cute offensively. Do what you do well, which is running the football, operating off play action. Don't try to get overly creative in this bowl game versus Georgia Tech because you don't want to lose possessions to a football team like the Yellow Jackets. And points add up. When you're able to get into the red zone, don't try to go for four, on fourth downs, try to get touchdowns. Points will add up because you're going to force Georgia Tech to score every time they have the football. That's why I say it doesn't matter if it's seven or three. You have to put points up on the board when you're facing an option team like the Yellow Jackets. And for Georgia Tech in this ball game, they're going to have to win on the outside. I'm talking about their cornerbacks versus the big physical wide receivers of Mississippi State. If they can win those one-on-one -on -one matchups, win above the rim, it bodes well for their chances to knock off the Bulldogs and they have to tie up loose ends. When you look at what happened in the ACC Championship game versus Florida State, they had a lot of penalties, a lot of false starts, a lot of turnovers. Those things, in my opinion, can't happen. That's not normal for a Georgia Tech football team. They have to make sure they tie up those loose ends versus Mississippi State. And against that Bulldogs offense, I will go with more cover two and cover four and try to force a guy like Dak Prescott to throw into tight windows, throw through coverage in order to have success. I think if they stay in cover two and cover four and get a little bit aggressive within their front seven, they can have a lot of success versus Mississippi State. The biggest X factor for the Bulldogs in this ball game will be the play of their safeties. When you're facing an option football team, your alley defense has to excel. That's your strong safety, Jay Hughes. That's your free safety, Deontay Evans. Even the corners have to excel in space. If they can play well in the secondary versus the run, they can have a lot of success versus this option attack of Georgia Tech. And for Georgia Tech, it's about can they stop the run. They're facing a football team in Mississippi State that's similar in concepts and what they're trying to do offensively with the running game. And that's what caused them to lose that football game versus Florida State. They couldn't stop the run in the second half. If they can do a better job in that capacity versus Mississippi State, they'll win this ball game easily. Now here's some 2015 draft prospects you want to keep an eye on in this ball game. And for Mississippi State, you look at Preston Smith. You're going to learn a lot about his technique versus Georgia Tech because you have to be technically sound when you play an option team. And for Georgia Tech, you look at Quashawn Neely, the linebacker. We're going to learn a lot about his athleticism in space versus the running game of Mississippi State. Eric Moles was a tremendous receiver for Mississippi State. He ranks fourth in yards and third in touchdowns on the Bulldogs' all-time career receiving list, and he finished his career with 117 receptions, 2,020 yards, averaging 17.1 yards a catch. Eddie McAshen was the first African-American football player to start for Georgia Tech, and he was also the first African-American to start at quarterback for a major Southeastern university. And he finished his Tech career with 4,262 yards of total offense, 35 total touchdowns, and Georgia Tech went 20-12-1 during his time as the Yellow Jackets starting quarterback. In the 1992 Orange Bowl, the Hurricanes defense reigned supreme versus the Nebraska Cornhuskers, who came into this ball game with a 9-1-1 record. Quarterback Geno Toretta led the offensive charge as Miami blinked Nebraska 22-0 in route to a co-national championship that season. It was a defensive battle in the 1981 Hall of Fame Bowl as the Mississippi State Bulldogs took on the Kansas Jayhawks and led by the dominating effort from Bulldog College Football Hall of Fame defensive lineman Glenn Collins, Mississippi State was able to keep Kansas scoreless, winning 10 to nothing.
In the 1956 Gator Bowl, Georgia Tech took on Pitt and the Yellow Jackets, led by legendary head coach Bobby Dodd, were outgained by the Panthers 313-207, to 207, but Tech's defense forced two Pitt turnovers, which helped kill Panther drives as the Yellow Jackets would go on to win 21-14. to 14. I like Mississippi State in this ball game, and although essentially these two teams play the same type of game conceptually, you're talking about ball control offenses that make timely plays on the defensive side, but I think the biggest X factor in this game will be the passing game of Mississippi State and quarterback Dak Prescott being able to find those one-on-one -on -one opportunities on the outside with those big physical wide receivers. So I see Mississippi State knocking off Georgia Tech in a very close Orange Bowl.